All right, let's take some time and talk about cis trans isomers of double bonds. Here we have a four carbon long chain with a double bond in the center. And I've made a molecular model for this, just like that one. And here is also a four carbon long chain with a double bond in the center. And I've made a molecular model of this one too. Are these the same molecule? Well, they're both C4H8 and the carbon atoms are in a straight chain and they have the double bond at carbon number two. But because double bonds can't rotate the same way that single bonds can, it means that these two, one where the CH3 groups are across from each other and one where the CH3 groups are on the same side of the plane of the double bond, are different. Take a look. Here we have a four carbon long chain. That makes it butte and a double bond at carbon number two, which makes it two ene. But the CH3 groups are on opposite sides of the plane of the double bond. So we, pre we preface the name with trans and the official name for this molecule, one of them is transbut2ene. Here we have the exact same thing, four carbons in a row with a double bond starting at carbon two, except the CH3 groups are on the same side of the double bond. When they're on the same side, we use the prefix cis. If you're into ball and like, if you're into the stick skeleton models for organic compounds, this molecule is this one and this molecule is that one. But what I really want to get across is that trans means across, cis means same side. Take a look at this molecule. On this side or attached to this carbon, we have an H and a CH3. On this carbon, we have two CH3 groups. If we could rotate this double bond, which we can't, if we could, these would replace each other and it would still be the exact same molecule because they're both CH3s. In order to even have cis-trans isomer, cis isomers, you need two different things attached to this carbon and two different things attached to this carbon. Otherwise, it's not cis-trans isomerism at all. This is just straight up 2-methyl-butene. And that's it, no cis-trans to worry about. I just want to also get across what happens if you have a more complicated molecule. The, the, you probably just took for granted that I said the CH3 groups were the important ones here. What it really comes down to is a set of rules called Kahn Ingold Prelog, which tell you which groups have precedence over each other. This carbon atom, which has a methyl group and an H attached to it. Well, you have two choices for which one gets precedence. It's t attached to an H and a C, and carbon has a higher atomic mass than hydrogen does, so the methyl group wins out. Taking a look at this carbon, it's attached to a carbon here and a carbon here. Those are the same, so we have to branch out further. This carbon was connected to three hydrogens, this carbon was connected to another carbon and two hydrogens. That carbon beats out the hydrogen, so he gets precedence on these two. If you had to do cis-trans isomerism for this, it would be cis. But really, cis and trans, I think, are much more for when you have two of the exact same group and you're trying to tell people if it's on the same or opposite side of the double bond. The more official or Kahn and Gold Prelog or IUPAC way of doing this is to say if, they're, if the two groups that have highest precedence are on the same side, then you preface the name with the letter Z. The Z tells us that the two precedence groups are on the same side, i.e. they're cis. Uh, I'll name this for you while I'm here. It looks like we got a one, two, three, four, five carbon chain with a methyl group sticking off here. So this is 
three methyl pent to ene. And because there's only one double bond, we everyone knows that this Z applies to that too. Okay? Now I created some more examples for you because I know you guys are hungry. Two carbons with a double bond between them. Check for cis-trans isomerism. These are different and these are different. Therefore, we do have it. Which groups get precedence? This carbon is connected to a carbon and a chlorine. Carbon weighs 12. Chlorine weighs 35. Chlorine wins. This carbon is connected to an oxygen and a fluorine. That's 16 atomic mass units versus fluorine's 19. Again, I would hesitate to call that trans because these two groups aren't even the same thing. I would jump to calling it E. Now, I don't particularly want to name this. It's a, uh, I'll name it anyways. It's a prop one ene one all because it's an alcohol, but we have uh, two chloro and a the one fluoro. Ugh, I'm not doing that again. The point is it's E because they were on opposite sides, like trans. All right, one more. Two carbons with a double bond. I and NH2 are not the same. I weighs 127. Nitrogen is 14. Here's a carbon connected to an ethyl and a phenyl. This carbon is connected to a carbon and a carbon. Those are the same, so we need to go one step farther. This is another carbon and two hydrogens. This carbon here is connected to one, two, three other carbons. Notice I'm double counting this one because it was double bonded. In any case, those extra three carbons at the you know second bond away from the central carbon beats out the ethyl group. This are on the same side, so we call it Z. And I am certainly not naming this. And finally, you might wonder why we had to create E and Z if cis and trans is working fine for us. Well, cis and trans gets really bulky, and I don't even know how to do it if you have more than one double bond. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine carbons in a row. That makes it a non. And the double bonds, I think starting from this side gives us the lowest numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Non, uh, two, four, seven, triene. Three double bonds starting at carbon two, four, and seven. And it's a nine carbon chain. I had to include this vowel because now the T is the next letter. It's a consonant. Okay, but what's really important to me is whether or not each bond is cis or trans. And I can say that because I have hydrogens here. These two car, oh, oh, let's start at carbon two actually. Carbon two is here. Now, when you draw straight chain uh, alkenes like this, you gotta remember these are actually 120 degree bond angles. All these angles are 120 degrees because of the hybridization here. But we're that CH3 and this CH3 are on opposite sides of the double bond. That may not be easy to see for you. And so instead, you can just consider the hydrogens. The hydrogens are clearly on opposite sides of the double bond. Huh? Great. Opposite sides means trans. So we will say 2E. Okay. Here's another one. The two carbon linkages are both on the bottom half here, or put another way, the two hydrogen linkages are both above the bond axis. So the double bond starting at carbon four is cis. And finally, once you get to carbon seven, hopefully you realize now that you can just compare where the hydrogens are. They're on the opposite sides, so that gives you seven trans as well. This is why it's so much easier with E and Z, because you can just say this, the, the double bond starting at carbon two is cis, the double bond starting at carbon four is Z, and the double bond starting at carbon seven is trans. I don't know if I got that right, but, uh, but I did for the rest of the video. 
And now you know. Good luck.